So, we have information that you're developing some sort of device. Explain. Oh, you must mean my telescopes. If that's what you call it, yes. Well, what are you wanting to know? Alright, tell me what's the function for it. The telescope's diameter is much bigger than that of your eye. So it allows you to gather a full view of the night sky. There, there is a design to focus light at one single point, magnifying that image. We have information that there are multiple types of your thing called telescopes. There are. <laughs> there are three, to be exact. Keep going. I've been working on three telescopes right now. I have designed a refractor, Newtonian reflector, and schmidt Cassegrain. They'll operate on the basis of light entering one side, and by either a lens or mirror, the light rays are directed to a point, the focal point, and then directed to the eyepiece of the telescope in which you can view the sky. What are the differences and how do they each operate? I'll begin with the refractor. I assume you have some sort of diagram in your file. May I see it? The refractor telescope filters starlight through an objective lens going down the optical tube to a focal point at the eyepiece. This is the type Galileo invented. Some advantages of the refractor telescope is its simple design and it's excellent for looking at the moon and planets. However, some disadvantages is it's not very good for nebula and galaxy viewing. And it costs more money than a simpler telescope. That covers a refractor telescope, but now onto your Newtonian reflector. Alright, how about you just um, hand your file over and I'll cover the remaining telescopes. Think this is funny? Ah! So, can I see the file? Oh, yeah, sure, man. Here you go. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, the Newtonian reflector filters starlight into a primary mirror in the back, which bounces back, hits a flat secondary mirror, and goes down into the eyepiece. Some advantages of the Newtonian reflector are its low cost, it is very good for planetary viewing, and it has very bright images. A few disadvantages are the fact that it requires regular alignment, and the image is portrayed upside down and backwards. The Caridi Optrix telescope is similar in a sense. Starlight goes through the optical tube. The light enters the telescope through a primary lens and begins focusing before hitting a primary mirror which finishes the focusing. The lens corrects the optical image making this type of telescope more sophisticated because it has both a lens and a mirror. Hitting a primary mirror, bouncing into a secondary mirror, hitting the eyepiece which is located in the back. Some 
one advantages of the Catodioptrix telescope are its best overall design and how good it is for deep sky planetary viewing. A few different advantages are how much it costs, despite the fact that it's the same size as the Newtonian reflector. Okay, so how do you classify your telescopes? What effects does the quality have of the image that you view from your telescopes? Is it the magnification? <laughs> That's what an amateur astronomer might think, but uh, what you should truly look at is the F value of the telescope. The F value of a telescope is in a linear relationship with the length of the telescope. Though the diameter may be smaller and you see less of the night sky, the image you see will be much clearer. For example, look at this image. Though it is clear and spectacular, if you wanted to look at this specific star, you would need a telescope with a greater F value. The F value is determined by dividing the length of the telescope by the diameter of the lens. Does uh, size matter? <gasps> I've been feeling too busy lately Just to stop and open my tired eyes Now I'm looking around, what a surprise The sun is shining I want a bite of my chocolate Twinkie. Not with a telescope like that. <coughs> Let me show you a real man's telescope. Oh, I like this better than the white one. Let's go back to my observatory. But wait, I love you! We're written in the stars! <laughs> oh, size does matter! Which reminds me... Look at this image! This is a picture of the M51 Whirlpool Galaxy taken by the Hubble Telescope. But if you look at it from much lesser telescopes like these amateur images, it is not nearly as spectacular. Point proven! Alright, so uh, how are these instruments held? And what are the platforms that they're attached to? Actually, uh, my sister, Jenna Jameson, has a whole lecture on it on YouTube. Today I'm going to be talking about two different types of mounts. We have the altitude azimuth mount and the equatorial mount. Now with the equatorial mount, it is much simpler and easier to use because one axis is stationary that actually follows the same axis as the Earth. And then the other axis has a simple dial to move it that follows all of the objects in the sky. And now, with the altitude azimuth, it's slightly more difficult to use because to follow the objects in the sky, you have to move it both sideways and up and down. Yeah. Are there any hazards of using this thing called telescopes? Rule number one, never, ever, 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 ever look at the sun through a telescope. Your retina will be instantly burned. This can cause eventual or instantaneous blindness that will be permanent. Not even when it's cloudy, not even as a joke. Do you understand the pertinence of this? Never put a telescope at the sun. All right, man, all right. Okay, so I guess we don't have any evidence of you really harming us, so you are free for now, man. What? Thank right. you. Have a good day. 
just to stop and open my tired eyes. Now I'm looking around, what a surprise. The sun is shining, birds are singing, flowers blooming, look what spring's bringing. It's a beautiful day and I'm holding your hand. The sky is blue and streams are flowing, trees are budding. Suddenly I'm knowing on this beautiful